Paul, the Sabres are coming off of a 3-2 shootout loss in Minnesota last night, but that wrapped up a seven-point four-game road trip, and now they're on a seven-game point streak. What is going right for these Sabres right now? It's amazing that they just finished up 12 games in 22 days with, with seven points in eight games mm -hmm. against tough teams. We're not talking about slacking teams here. You, you went out and beat the number one and two teams in the Western Conference in their building mm -hmm. and still almost wound up winning all four games because they played well in the game. And what was amazing was they didn't wear down. I figured by the end of this stretch, they would have worn down, and they didn't. They played really well against Minnesota. It was an even game back and forth. They never tired, and it was a really good game, and they were all good games. Mm -hmm. I, I thought maybe in St. Louis they might be tiring a little, but mm -mm. it was really amazing to see what they were able to accomplish out there. Twitter was exploding a little bit over Uka Pekalukkanen in that shootout against the Wild. I mean, what do you say to that? I mean, it's it's one bad shootout. Well, he stopped Boldy three times point blank, you know, in the third period. He made two great saves in overtime. He makes the big save at the big time. All right, so he had a bad shootout. Mm -hmm. Nobody was madder than he was if you watched him walk right. down the hall afterwards. And he'll practice it. He's, he's 23 years old. He'll figure it out. You know, breakaways right now, for the most part, aren't his thing. Uh, he gave one up to Connor at home, I remember, where he kind of sprawled and put himself out of the play. But overall, I mean, you can't criticize what this kid has come in and done. And they're playing a lot of games in a lot of days. Now that's finally easing back before the All-Star break uh, right now. But they, they played a lot of hockey in a very short amount of time. Uh, who really impressed you over this stretch? Well, you know, when Tage Thompson wasn't scoring goals, he still was getting points. Mm -hmm. He still was contributing. And that's something Don Granado has really talked to these guys about. Okay, you don't have your, the game you want. How are you going to contribute? There are other ways you can contribute. You're tired. Okay. How are you going to figure out how to win this game? Because we're going to win this game anyway, so we got to figure it out type of thing. And that's what Thompson did. The puck wasn't going in the net, but he was getting assists. He was finding passing lanes to set up his line mates. So he still was contributing a lot. Now the puck's starting to go in for him again, right. which you knew it would. But those are the types of things that they're looking for when things aren't going well. Things aren't going well for Quinn and Paterka at mm -hmm. times as far as scoring. All right, but they're still in the lineup. They're still playing because they're finding other ways to contribute to the team. Yeah, they're finding ways to get it done. Meanwhile, Tage Thompson is the only representative for the Sabres as of now uh, for the All-Star game. So that's a pretty big snub for uh, Rasmus Dahlin. Uh, what do you think of that? And just not having, having so few defensemen in the All-Star game in the NHL is just bonkers to me and they wonder why people <laughs> call it a garage league right there are defensemen yeah. in the national mm -hmm. hockey league it is a complete embarrassment that the atlantic division team does not, not have one defenseman not and in <laughs> the division is the guy who many consider the second best defenseman in the league right mm -hmm. now and he's not going to play in the all-star game I mean, if nothing else, make a position for defensemen. I understand right. when fans vote, which they voted for two guys, they're going to vote for they forwards. Like to vote and for forwards. Yeah, yeah, and I get that. But make sure there's a spot on right. each team so there's a defenseman out there. What if Darlene keeps going the way he's going or even gets better <laughs> and wins the Norris Trophy? Oops, congrats, an all -star congrats NHL. <laughs> the Norris Trophy winner is not in your all-star game. It just makes no sense at all. It, it really doesn't look great, but he did say, you know, well, I can at least go somewhere warm or go on a vacation. Go on a vacation, and so. I'm sure it's probably not to Alaska. So win-win <laughs> for Dolly, no matter what. Uh, with this team moving forward, is there any kind of guy, I, you've talked so much before about how Kevin Adams is only going to trade for a certain type of player at a certain age. Timo Meyer, big bodied, and is 26 years old. Is that something that the Sabres should be exploring with the San Jose Sharks? Yeah, and they've talked, you know, they've, they've all right, what's it going to cost type of talk, you know? Mm -hmm. But that's exactly the type of guy that he would be looking for. 26 years old, a guy who can score goals. He scored 35 last year, 28, can play at both ends of the ice, has size. That's the type of guy you give up an asset for. Not a guy who's Skinner's age, who maybe can help you this year make the playoffs, 
Meyer can help you this year, and he can help you when you're going to be contending for the Stanley Cup down the road. He's still going to be around and still be effective type of guy. Now, yeah, it's going to cost you probably eight, nine million dollars a year. Somebody asked me if the if the locker room would be upset about that. Not this locker room. They don't care. They want to win. It's different. It's different yeah. now. Yeah. So if you got to give up a guy like Jack Quinn, and I'm not down on Jack Quinn, that's actually a compliment to him. Right. That a, a team would be interested in. So. You've got so many prospects right now. Or if you got to give up maybe one of your number one picks that you picked last year, who many people think the Sabres really made out well there. Mm -hmm. If you got to give up an asset, maybe a first or a second round pick, not both, but one or the other, that's, the, that's when you give up the asset because you're still, you're pretty sure Quinn's going to be a good player, but he's not there yet. You know what you're getting in Meyer. Right. You know exactly what you're getting. And meanwhile, the Sabres moving forward. Um, Again, a lot of games in a very short amount of time. Now they only have one more game uh, ahead of the All-Star break. How is this team going to manage this change of pace? I mean, they've hardly been able to get any practices in, or how are they able to manage that? Yeah, they're finally going to practice for two right. days, play a game, and then they're going to go away because <laughs> they've got the All-Star break and then their bye week. So that they have, don't have another game till I believe, the 11th. Wow, yeah. So other teams around them are going to have a chance to maybe catch up. Mm -hmm. You know, so a lot of the progress you've made, you're going to have to redo again, maybe, depending on how they play. And two, we know how they play when they play a lot of games. How are they going to be when they get back when they've hardly played at all? Mm -hmm. You know, so and, and been on vacation and, and that type of thing. So that's a worry, too, is all right, how long will it take them to get their game back when they've been gone for so long? Right. But. When you look at the standings, they are right in the thick of this playoff hunt. This is not something that we've talked about for quite a while in Buffalo uh, with this hockey team. And do you think that they really can go the distance and, I mean, at least be playing competitive games in April and maybe make the postseason? Well, they're definitely a good team. They've shown us that. There's no question about that. I was talking about at the beginning of the year them – they need an improvement. They need 90 points or better. They're on that right. pace yeah. right now, a bit going over 90 points. Last year it took 100 points to get in the playoffs. They're not on that pace yet, but that's high. It mm -hmm. usually doesn't take 100 points to get in. So you can look at it that way too. The Caps might be a better, they're seventh place because they're even with the Penguins in games and they're done playing them. Right. But the Caps, they still have games in hand and they still play the Capitals two Twice, more times. Right. Yeah. So they might be looking more at the Capitals than the Penguins right now. That's definitely a possibility. And it's crazy that, you know, they're over under in points for the beginning of the season with 78 and a half. I think they're going to blow by that. Um, Why didn't you tell me? I would have gone on that I one. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Paul Hamilton, thank you so much. Take care, guys.